You know, I joked as I came in this morning, most of the times that I have spoken here in this church, it has rained. <laughs> now, most ministers bring sunshine. I bring rain. If I, if I spoke here more often, there would not be a drought in the Houston area. I would like to share some true stories with you on the prayer that someone who comes to this message today is in this situation. I know that somebody is because that is the way that God works. I know that someone needs this, and I know about divine appointments. This I pray, is direct help to you in the form of encouragement. And what kind of encouragement? For life improvement. When I first got into all of this, I got in for self-improvement. And then, you must go beyond that. You must go beyond that and have what develops in self to come out and overflow. And what you're praying for is you're praying for life improvement. But how? Let's talk about how. After his first screen test in 1933, Fred Astaire saw this memo from the casting director. Can't act. Slightly bold can dance a little, but not too well. <laughs> Fred Astaire kept that memo over his fireplace for the rest of his life. Think about that. Think about that. Have you ever had anyone say anything about you that was not true? Now, there are two types of people, and both of these types of people are within us. First, there is the type of person who would read that memo, throw up their hands and say, what's the use? Why should I try? I tried, but I failed. The second type of person, also within us, is the person that holds on to hope because they're holding on to God. And with a smile on their face, with a kind of a gut reaction from the spiritual gut within us, says, this is not true. I know that I'm going to allow spiritual miracles to take place in me. And I know that I can succeed. And when they hold on this way, it always happens. The saddest thing in the world is there are millions of people in the world that have allowed some untruth sometime, somewhere to stop their lives. The invisible becomes visible through your attitude. There are millions and millions of people who have laughed in the face of adversity and through their belief in God's help they were saved. Nothing stopped them. An expert once said of Vince Lombardi, he possesses minimal football knowledge, and he lacks motivation. <laughs> Louisa May Alcott, the author of the book Little Women, was encouraged after writing to find work as a servant or a seamstress, by her own family. They told her, we love you, we truly do, but you can't write. <laughs> she held on. There is a spiritual spark in each one of us, and that spiritual spark is God. When your awareness of God is full inside of you, you and God together can do the impossible. Now I want you to think about something. 
three words. Are you ready? God needs you. God needs you. You often don't think about that, do you? You think, I need God, especially when I am facing some adversity. You think, oh God, if only you would come close in this moment and help me, I could make it. But in your greatest need, your greatest hour of desperation, God needs you. For God to produce a miracle through you, God has to come through you, through your free will. You have to say, dear, wonderful God, I am ready. I consent. I am willing to have you come through and work your power in and through me. And life improvement comes in that moment. When you do this, everything changes. First, there is a change in your attitude. Now, it may be subtle at first, but you begin to realize you're uplifted a bit. And then you begin to realize you're not quite as desperate or as depressed as you were before. Now, spiritual growth is not like this. It is like a spiral. And sometimes it's very thinly threaded. You come around here and you think, well, gee, I am facing, again, the same thing that I faced before. Maybe, but you're not facing it at the same level. You're a bit higher. You're constantly moving up the spiral and constantly seeing things from a new vantage point. You begin to see things as you have not seen them before. And there is a wonderful spirituality that is working in and through you. Depending on how far down you are, it may take a little bit of time, but persist. And you hold on to God, and you hold on to hope. Walt Disney was told by a newspaper in Kansas City that he could not write or draw. Walt Disney went bankrupt three times. What was different about Walt Disney? Why didn't he give up? That third time going bankrupt, why didn't he say, you know, this isn't working? I've tried. I'm going to do something to make a living. I'm going to become a plumber. He could have. What kept him going? There was a spiritual spark inside of Walt Disney. And it's not different from the spiritual spark that is in you. It is God. And it is hope. A human's hope plus God equals success. Now that's a spiritual formula. Hope plus God equals success. Louis Pasteur was a mediocre pupil at best. Mediocre. He ranked 15 out of 22 in chemistry. That's about where my ranking was. He was failing at not only that, but everything. But something, something, a spark inside of him told him that greatness could come through him. Isaac Newton did very, very poorly in school. But something gave him a hope to hold on to, and he knew, and he wrote about it later on in his older age, knew that he could produce wonderful miracles no matter what was said about him by 
fellow humans. Henry Ford. Henry Ford failed and went broke five times. But he held on to hope. Hope inside of you is spiritual. It is a spiritual asset that we have to never let go of. My friends, when we're looking for trouble, we see only trouble. When a pickpocket sees a saint, he sees only the saint's pockets. We have to broaden our vision by opening up our awareness of God and accepting the very best in us. And when we do this, the very best will come through. The other day, someone said, I was driving to work and I noticed a monster in my rearview mirror. And then I noticed it was me. There are monsters in our lives and we have to assume the responsibilities for these monsters and ask God's help to bring good into our lives again. It is an inner responsibility of ours. We have to go beyond just self-improvement to reach life improvement. How fickle we are as a human race. We are born as a baby with hope. It's one of the things that a baby has. A baby has a wonderful, sweet smile. Ten toes and ten fingers. But also a God-given spark of hope for a better day. And then something some place, probably forgotten now. We create things to worry about in our lives. We think that this is just too good. And there has to be something wrong somewhere, and we create for ourselves worry and fear to bring about imagined bad into our lives. Now, my friends, I'm not saying that you never have anything that you don't have to be concerned about. But you know from living your life that most of our worries are imagined. And they never come to pass in our lives. And then when we're immersed in our worries, we, we pray in a strange way. We pray as if God is separate from us and the thing we are worried about is always very close to us, waiting to get us when we're not looking. And then we manifest those things through our own wrong thinking. If you're dwelling on bad things, what you fear the most may come upon you. In a way, the worrier attracts it. The worry becoming the dominant thought in the mind. The worrier literally becomes the worry. If we're using our faith, though, in the right way, we're bringing the best good into our lives constantly. A negative person might say something like this, and believe me, my friends, they do every day on our prayer requests that we receive. They say, I'm absolutely positive that my business is at a dead end. There's no way that I can possibly make it work. They're actually thinking, perhaps wishing that it would all be over so that they wouldn't have to deal with it any longer. And there's no way, and they're kind of defending how bad it is with me. There's no way that anything good can come out of this, and disaster is inevitable. When you're working in a situation like that, ask for a transfer. Ask for a transfer to the power of God. 
Ask for God to take over the management of your company, over your career, over your life. Ask for a transfer, and that transfer will come, and hope will come back. Hope stands for human, optimistic, positive empowerment. As we embark on this adventure called life improvement, it is right that we have hope as the foundation, the very bedrock of what we stand on every day. When you get up in the morning, and it is daily that a good life is built. One day at a time that a good life is built. When we know, without a doubt, that God is going to work in and through our lives. No longer do we hold on to fear. How often we do. We grip it, we hold on to it, we won't let go, and we defend holding on to it. During this moment, you ask and you grasp. You ask for God's help. And you grasp on to God and you will not let go no matter what. And you start to realize, no matter what, that God is with you. And then hope becomes part of your spiritual DNA. You literally have it in the core of your being. There's a new light that is lit inside of you. And this new light of God, it eliminates permanently all darkness. Seen through the eyes of 2020 spiritual vision. In Romans 8, 24 and 25, it says, For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. 2020 spiritual vision is beyond what we can see with the human eyes. It is the most crystal clear vision that a human being can ever put on and wear. It helps you to see things that before you would have been blind to. And hope and faith are brothers and sisters. They walk hand in hand to change your entire life. St. Augustine once wrote, Men go abroad to wonder at the heights of the mountains, the huge waves of the sea, the long courses of the rivers, the vast compass of the ocean, the circular motion of the stars, and they pass themselves by without wondering at all. The next time that you see your image in a mirror, it will not be a monster there. It will be your best friend, your motivator, your person that believes in you more than anyone else in the world. It'll be someone that is constantly at your back, having your back, telling you what you can do and what you will be. Mary Kay of Mary Kay's Cosmetics believed this. She taught her people this. She taught them to have life improvement in this way. And here's what she said one time. She said, that her whole company was founded upon hope, fueled by enthusiasm. Mary Kay Ash said, a mediocre idea that generates enthusiasm will go further than a great idea that inspires no one. Not only pray for dreams, but pray for an enthusiasm inside of you to bubble up and take over you. 
You'll never work another day in your life when you have this. It is the fuel of God to keep you moving, keep you succeeding. Walt Disney once said in his later years, after he had been through everything, he said, all of our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Well, what gives you courage? It's God. God gives you courage. It is your awareness of the divine power in you. Now, that may be dormant in some ways at this present time, but I tell you, it is there. It is a God-given gift that you have, and it can be called forth. You ask, and you grasp onto it. It is with you right now. Steven Spielberg said this, he said, I don't dream at night, I dream all day, I dream for a living, and he said, it's God that gives me the dreams. The incredible imagination, the incredible excitement to bring it into manifestation. The first thing you have to say to the monster in the mirror is you have to say, I no longer am going to live behind your excuses. I am going to free myself from the prison of excuses. Then you go to God, and you ask, and you grasp, and you have a serious talk with God, and you ask God's help for empowering your dreams, to empower your hope, to empower your faith. And you don't forget to pray for the stamina to keep going in the in-between times. You never let seeming barriers stop you from realizing what God has in store for you. Something that I relate to very much, the comic Jerry Seinfeld. When he was first starting out, he was having a hard time writing. Now he had a dream, that spark inside of him, to become a great comic writer. But he couldn't make himself write until he discovered a system to get through the in-between time. He said, and he says to us, to get a big wall calendar that has a whole year on one page. Hang it on a prominent wall. The next step is to get a big red magic marker. He said, each day that I did my task of writing, I get to put a big red X over that day. And after a few days, you'll have a chain. Just keep at it, he said, and the chain will grow longer each day. You'll like seeing that chain especially when you get a few weeks under your belt, your only job next is don't break the chain. I can remember when I was a little boy, my father gave me an encyclopedia of Britannica. And you know how big that was. It sat in the bookshelf and only it was, you know, this big. And I said... To my dad, I remember saying this. I, I said, how does anybody ever write that much? And he said, well, there are many people that contributed to the encyclopedia. But he said, if you started and you wrote every day, you could have something that big too. The other day, we looked at a stack of daily inspirations from the beginning. We're almost 15 years old now. And that stack was bigger than an Encyclopedia Britannica. It was up like to here. It was like a Tolstoy <laughs> work. Every day, you do a little bit. You continue. And then, as you're doing it, you realize it's not you. 
It's God. Your most prized possession as a human being are your hopes and your dreams. Do you realize that is what makes you rich? It's not what's in your wallet. It's what's in you. It is, you, you don't live out here, you live in here. I've known many people with fat wallets with lots of cash that were miserable. Because somehow they had forgotten the elements that made them rich. The hopes, the dreams. In Ephesians 4, 23 and 24, it says, Be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and clothe yourself with the new self, created in the likeness of God. Do you know what God wants of you? God wants you to dream big dreams. God doesn't want you to stay stagnant. God wants you to have hope. God wants you to have faith. I would like it said of me more than anything else that I'm a person with a thousand dreams. I always will be. I like living that way. I encourage you to live that way. Norman Vincent Peale, kind of my mentor, said this, a person with 100 interests is twice as alive as one with only 50, and four times as alive as one with only 25. Realize what God can do through you. And realize all the things that you can accomplish with God. And don't look at the obstacles. Don't stand behind the excuses. Henry Ford once said that obstacles are those frightful things you see when you take your eyes off the goal. Even if you're right on track, he said, you're going to get run over if you just sit there. You have to get up. And you have to move. Life begets life. Energy begets energy. It is by spending oneself that you become a success. For life improvement, number one. You have to accept your hopes again. What does it mean in the Bible where it says to become like a child again? Rediscover that God-given gift of a brighter tomorrow in your own mind, in your own reflection. Number two, don't criticize your hope yourself. And number three, Never be a critic of another person's hope. With God, who is to say what is not possible? Because with God, all things are possible. And the people that encourage you along the way, they'll be the people you remember. They're the angels of life. Now let me tell you a story about that. This is a story of a wife that used encouragement. The wife's name, Sophia. She encouraged her husband. He came home one day with tears in his eyes. A totally defeated man that had given up on life. Why? Because he said to his wife, who he sat down at the kitchen table, he said, I've been fired. I don't know how we're going to make it. I don't know how we'll have the money to survive. She, instead of buying in to that monster in the mirror, she said, thank God. She said, you're a great writer. I've been waiting for something like this to happen. Thank God. And he 
sat across the table shocked. He said, how can you have this attitude? What are we going to live on? And she opened a drawer in the kitchen and there was a pile of cash. She said, weekly, you have given me an allotment to run the household. I've saved back a good deal of that money for a time just like this. When you no longer worked at the customs house and doing something that you weren't meant to do. We have enough for you to live and for me to live for an entire year for you to write your great work. Praise God, she said, that you have been fired. Now, she said, you and God go after your dream. And he started to work. And he started to write. Every day he wrote more. And within a year, out of that trust, out of that confidence, came one of the greatest novels of American literature, The Scarlet Letter. The man that had been fired at the customs house was Nathaniel Hawthorne. Had he allowed his own doubting human mind to live behind the excuses, we would have to live without that great God-given talent manifested through him. We would have had to live without this great book. There are great things that can come through each of us. There are wonderful things that can come through our encouragement of others into the world. We just have to ask God and grasp on to God and with 2020 spiritual vision see beyond, as Jesus said, the appearances. Let us pray. I pray this day for life improvement. God, I pray that I again become a hopeful, God-centered, faith-filled person. I am willing to see the best when I look into the mere God, not only to see what I have seen with my human eyes, but give me that 2020 spiritual vision so that I see the best. I pray that I have a divine power with me daily. I ask and I grasp onto you to cleanse my mind and my heart of old patterns of thinking that have kept me slowed down or even halted from my God-given good. I pray, dear God, that you will open my mind and help me to feel anew your hand taking my hand and pulling me on on desired paths toward desired dreams. I have hope because I have you, God. And you have me, God. Together we are one, God. Together we are victory, dear God. Together we are accomplishment. And together we are all that a good life is. Hope, faith, be reborn in me this day. Thank you, dear God. In Jesus' name, amen.